Uh, I've been playing with NVIDIA AI yeah. Workbench. GPUs are always one of the things every once in a while. I wish I had more than the two GPU, the really one real GPU that I've got here at the house, my home lab, I mean. And um, so somebody at NVIDIA turned me onto this Brev.dev and they are a GPU, CPU aggregator. Basically you can come through them and they will provision in AWS, GCP, uh, Google Cloud, Lambda Labs, um, it doesn't do Azure, which I found really interesting. Uh, but all the other providers, you can basically rent <clears throat> space through brev.dev for that. And it's kind of cool. Um, it's not like it would be a, like a production environment or anything. It's really um, because of the way you connect to it. It's and it's on their network. Um, it lets you, gives you access, temporary access or ongoing access to GPU and CPU resources to use. And um, the pricing is pretty interesting. You have hourly and spot, and I'll show you that in a minute. The first thing you do when you want to use this thing um, is you go to the brev.dev console. So where it says get started, it'll take you to the console. In my case, I'm using the federated Google login. So now, uh, yeah, that's me. <clears throat> and it'll take me into the brev.dev dashboard console thing. So the first thing I wanted to show you was, what, here's another thing I really like about it. <clears throat> is um so you can see i burned down a little bit yesterday 42 cents i was on the thing for about an hour and um 42 cents and 15 cents 1.5 cents of storage okay the thing i like i, I think is cool so now i'm down to nine dollars and 56 cents when what for experimentation like you can hook it up and federate and do payment plans and purchase and all that kind of stuff right do auto recharge for your experimentation this is a really cool um like if you just like if you're in an enterprise and you're going to use a model for something and you don't want to buy training, right? Buy training CPUs every, all the time. So uh, you like permanently. So in this case, I um, have a credit card, which I now need to erase this from the video. Um, and um, so I ended up with this $9 and 56 cent uh, balance here because basically I purchased credits and I picked $10 worth. Right. So that's that part. So then, so now I have, I'm on brev.dev. I have this rentable space. I've created a budget. I created a login through my Google ID. Um, and now what I'd like to do is what? Now I want to provision something, right? And then when I provision it, if I want to get on them, like I want to see what instances I have out there, I, you know, like if I have more than one set of machines, like if I'm in a company and I have a set of machines, if I want to start, um, an instance or stop it, uh, okay, that'll change the pricing a little bit and, uh, you can, so if you don't plan on using, you can temporarily pause it by running this stop and everything will be saved. And that will, uh, you'll have to look at what the costing is. I couldn't figure it all out. I haven't done it yet. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create an instance. So I'm going to go back over here. There are actually two ways to create machines. There's probably more one you can deploy functions, that kind of thing. So this one here is sort of the raw, I want to create a machine. So I can say, I want to create a new machine. I can either do it as a Docker container and pick the Docker instance I want, or I can say that I really want uh, a VM and I could have put a Jupyter notebook on here too. But in my case, I'm actually going to try and run NVIDIA AI Studio on this. So now I just need to pick the size of the GPU that I want. Let's say I want, um, I could do like a, you know, an A6000, right? That's a lot of memory. That's a, well, a dollar. So that's a 48, oh, that's actually cool. So that's 48 gig of VRAM, 100 gig of memory, 14 CPUs out of Lambda Labs for 96 cents an hour. So if I click on that, um, at this point, I can just say, so the total running rate is not available. If I were to say deploy, I assume I'll get our total run rate. So let's try it. <laughs> No. Well, <clears throat> so it's actually deploying now. So this thing's going to start up and then I can install the T CLI and I can um, term get, get a terminal into this thing, right? <clears throat> and then I can install whatever I want. In my case, I'm going to try and run uh, AI Workbench. People that aren't going to want to run workbench or going to want like an appliance motor, just going to run a train, run a Jupyter notebook. You would have flipped on the Jupyter notebook. Um, and it would give you the, uh, the way to connect to that notebook. <clears throat> Actually, you know what, let's do that too. Let's go back. 
and let's create another new one. <clears throat> and I can say we're going to pre-install Jupyter Notebook. Hmm, that's interesting. And I can pick the same A6000. <clears throat> and I can pick how many of these Jupyter, how many of these uh, NVIDIA A6000s. This isn't right, actually. <clears throat> Well, I guess it's each card is an A6000. So I can say I want to do that, and then um, I can spin that puppy up. So now I've actually spun two of these up. This is going to be pricey. We'll make call it number two here. We're going to make number two. Okay. Uh, so you can see here, same thing, right? Open VS Code, open a terminal. Um, but the one that's different on this one is it actually also gave me uh, a Jupyter Notebook thing here. Right, so if I were to look at my instances here, I'm actually gonna kill this first one and say delete it. It isn't even provisioned yet, I don't care. So we're gonna watch this one, right? So this thing is gonna take a while. I'm looking at my instances, we're gonna delete this one, we're gonna start this one. I decided to do this because this way I have a Jupyter notebook on it and it's a VM. And if I want to, I could install other tools on this piece, <clears throat> like pull scripts in from GitHub and then run them, that kind of thing. So one of the things I'm going to need to do, though, is set up the environment um, to, to talk with the CLA. So one of the things that's kind of unfortunate, their tools are all for Linux. That's great, unless you're on a Windows machine, in which case you actually need to have a WSL instance. And what you'll do is copy that to the clipboard, and I'm going to... So this is kind of unfortunate, in my opinion. And I'll, it's because of the SSH credentials. I'll do another talk on how to manage that. So here, what's going to happen is I'm just going to install the tools for uh, Brev on here. And <clears throat> all right, so now what I'm going to do so now it's going to want to create SSH temporary token or a, a PAT, you know, uh, access token. And it's and it needs to do that um, so that any commands I run in this WSL instance are actually connected to my Brev instances. Right. So, again, if you're going to do all model, you don't care about any of this. You're just going to use a Jupyter notebook. No big deal. I just wanted to give you a feel for how this works. All right. So this is the single use token. Let's uh, let's try this again. And there we go. That's actually the same one. So I'm using the Windows browser to do the authentication. So the CLI, so I don't have to do any freaking copy and paste because I'm, well, except for that URL. But I don't have to copy secrets back and forth because we don't want to copy secrets back and forth. All right, so we're successfully logged in. And now it'll like initialize and install itself or do something. Not install itself, I just did that. So we'll let that run for a minute. Yep, there we go. So now we can do brev ls. This is like a Docker thing. They kind of did their own sort of, but it's like for the VMs and the stuff that you bought on brev on brev.dev. So this ls command always takes a while. I think it's because it's setting up a tunnel. So we can see we have an awesome GPU2 running now, right? GPU 1x A6000. And this thing's here. And if we come, so this was my login window. This is the CLI. Uh, command piece, right? I can actually shell into those using uh, brev, um, not stop, it's brev, uh, not delete. You know what? Let's just do it in the terminal window because they probably have help. So let's go back over here. Yep. <coughs> so I can actually do brev shell. What was that? What was the output of the ls command again? Do, do, do. Awesome GPU name too. Brev shell awesome awesome GPU name two. So now again, if you're running like a NIM or you're gonna run like a Jupyter notebook, the Newton Jupyter notebook, you really didn't have to do this. Um, in this case, I'm just doing this so that. I can run some shell stuff and I, I actually needed this, an SSH connection for something else, right? So now I'm actually on that. It's added 
the credentials into this terminal. So now I can, anytime I want, I can go and into this one instance, every time I do this, I'll end up setting this up again, right? Like if I don't keep this instance around, we're gonna tear it down. And okay, so that's pretty cool. Uh, that instance is actually up. The other way to do this is you can create a launchable and you can say, I want uh, an A6000. And that's good enough for me. I want one of them. It's going to be 90 cents an hour, but I actually want to go for spot pricing. So in this case, I can save 60% on my dollar an hour. And this can, the difference on this is this launchable is a savable config. The instance one I did, man, you just, there's no template or anything. This actually becomes a template. So now this becomes save compute, right? And I can add a container if I want to, I can expose ports um, if I need to. If I made this a, a Jupyter notebook, you know? So in this case, I'm just gonna say this is uh, Joe's A6000 Lambda Labs uh, spot, right? And I'm gonna generate a launchable. And this, so this is gonna be a template config. And so um, now anybody that, want, that I know that wants to use this can actually, you know, they can go and see what this launchable looks like. So, doo -doo -doo -doo. all right, so you can see here I have a 96, but we can actually do it at spot and we can deploy this launchable. Now this one is actually uh, still in Lambda Labs. So let's do deploy. And we'll go to the instance page and we can see it's actually building this thing. So it's deploying the GPU and then it's gonna install the software and let's see what's still happening on this guy. So we still have, so you can see here that that launchable actually mapped into a compute instance at Lambda Labs. We have this one here still that we're looking at. Um, you know what, let me see if I can shell in yet or if it's still down, could be a network problem. What was that? Oh, the Jupyter notebook didn't work before. So let's go back to that. We can look at this guy. We'll try the Jupyter Notebook again. It still says unhealthy. So this one didn't come up right, right? If I were to click on this, I bet, yeah, we still have a tunnel problem. So this one's busted. Let's see if the other one works. So a couple minutes ago, I showed a, well, I don't know how long it'll be in the video, but we had this failure to deploy. <clears throat> we had a failure to launch. Um, so I created this other one. This is actually another at Lambda Labs. This fluid stack one didn't work. So I'm gonna try a different Lambda Labs at A6000. We can go to here. Um, it turns out that I put a Jupyter Notebook in this. So let's try it. Let's go to this Jupyter Notebook. So that's it. I ended up with, a, what did I put in here? A6000 GPU container that I can actually use for my Jupyter Notebook. I also can connect to this um, with a shell <clears throat> on a, from a WSL instance where I've installed the tooling. So here I am on my WSL instance. Um, if we, we're gonna run the LS command, it's gonna remote, see what all the instances look like. So we know the fluid stack one is bad. I'm gonna tear that one down. Actually, I probably should just do that now. Let me see if I can do that. Uh, let's go back to the instances and this one, we should just delete it. I'm going to do that. That should take care of that. So this one should be in, in the, you know, getting ready to be knocked down. So let's go back to the terminal. Make sure this one can get deleted. Yep. So it's already gone or it will be gone soon. Uh, we can go back to the terminal window that I was in run brew ls. Okay, so now what I'm gonna wanna do is I'm gonna wanna shell into that thing. So into, looks like Lambda spot. So this is an A6000 instance running Lambda. So it's brew grav shell. Then we'll see if this works. Yep, looks like we're waiting for it to come ready. Really, it's setting up a network tunnel here. And away we go, hopefully. So
So <clears throat> this is at Lamb, uh, is an A6000 at Lambda Labs, not AWS. I put the provider in the name so I'd remember. And now we're logged in on that machine. So if I wanted to install a whole bunch of extra tools or do something else on this thing, look at the logs, I can do that, right? On the other hand, like I showed, we could just click on this. We could open the notebook because we know that's the container it's installed and we can start doing model training. Okay, so it's running and I thought I said I wanted to delete this thing. Yes. <clears throat> so that A6000 Lambda spot should be start be towed down. There we go, deleting. That thing's gonna go away and then we'll look at it later. So what did we do? We logged into the, we looked at the pricing. We found out we can rent GPUs. We can rent pre-configured models and notebooks that are already out there or we can rent an empty shell. And it turns out there were actually two different ways for us to build these, right? One of them <clears throat> is that we can just create an instance. That one doesn't support spot to currently, or at least I can't find the UI for it, right? So in that case here, <clears throat> you can see that we don't have anything else running, right? <clears throat> we could create a new raw instance, but I think the launchable plans the launchable plans is actually better here because that lets me pick, you know, like the spot pricing. So all of these I did at spot pricing and sometime later I'll get a nut feel for what they actually cost. If, if spots available, it'll use it. If spots not available, it won't use it. So I did all of these as single GPU configs. And I think all of these were, um, VMs that had a Jupyter notebook in them, but I could do other things like uh, run AI workbench on them when I get around to it. That's it. Have a great day.